in the last video we created uh, an Ubuntu machine 1804 and we updated it. Uh, we're going to be following the directions here, Apache enable SSL Ubuntu, and we're going to be creating a self-signed certificate. So it's not going to have any trust incorporated with it at first. It will allow for encryption between two endpoints. But uh, the endpoints that are involved will not trust us in terms of that being able to validate who we say we are. And we'll go through that set of steps after we sort of generate a self-signed certificate. So uh, the first one, we're going to click on the second, this Digital Ocean right here. These are the directions we're going to follow. So uh, you can, I, I tend to skip around and I know which ones to skip. If you want to follow this by yourself to set it up and make it work, you'll see at the end of this video uh, what it looks like when we connect to the website. But uh, take a look at these and just try to think about uh, what they do instead of just strictly copying and pasting. This is the open SSL command. And uh, open SSL we'll look at this year and we'll do uh, several different things with it. Open SSL is a pretty cool program. But we're going to generate a uh, self-signed certificate that's called Apache self-signed. And so we won't be incorporating any um, CAs or certificate authorities uh, in this process. We're just going to sign it ourselves and we're going to say to the user on the other end, you know, if you'd like to create some encryption, that's great, but you have no guarantee that I am who I say I am. Kind of the idea here. So I'm going to copy that. And here we are. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And you can see that it's going to drop a certificate into Etsy SSL certs Apache self signed dot cert. And it's going to create a key that's called Etsy SSL private Apache self signed key. And essentially we have a private key and then we've got our public certificate here. Now we have to enter this stuff in and we don't have to be exact, but I'm going to say country US. There is one piece that has to be exact here and it's towards the end, the domain name. State, I'll go ahead and say Texas. San Antonio. Organizational name, uh, how about 11 eloping elephants? Organizational unit name, how about something like pachyderm gene? And common name, this is, where, this is what counts. So um, I have to take a look at what I created so it's been a few minutes. Newbeck.moo.com. This is super important. The domain name's got to match. Newbeck.moo.com. This is because one of the things you need to know for Security Plus is, among other things, the domain name of the public certificate that's sent to the client when they request it uh, has to match the domain name they're trying to connect to. So this has got to match in order for it to work. And email address, I'll just go ahead and say newbeck at, it doesn't matter here, you could really put anything. But I'm going to remember this because we're going to match this up later just to be double sure. Awesome, so now we've generated uh, two certificates and if we were to look in the Etsy SSL private and the Etsy SSL certs directory, we would find those. The next direction we find is we're going to edit a file called, uh, under conf available, we're going to create a file called sslparams.conf, and we'll be adding this into our configuration with a command later. And if you scroll down the page, you're going to find a block that looks like this. Now, this is kind of important because these are things that are asked about on Security Plus in terms of like, you're the server, someone is requesting that public certificate so they can create a private key and establish encryption, you know. Um, what encryption ciphers are available? Well, AES GCM, uh, AES 256, uh, plus uh, this elliptical curved Diffie helmet. So we're providing a list of cipher suites we, we uh, support. We're providing a list of protocols that we support that's also sent to the client. All of this could be asked about on, on this Security Plus. Um, let's see what else is important here. SSL stapling. All right. So here's what stapling means. If you send a certificate, uh, it can be stapled in that 
Here's what that means. Once the user requests a certificate for the first time, the next time the user goes to that website, it's going to expect to receive the same certificate. So if we were to switch the certificate out, it would uh, kind of break the user's experience. They'd have to work few a few, uh, a few uh, excuse me, they'd have to work through a few things. So stapling is when you grab that public certificate for the first time, the client expects to use that same certificate every other time afterwards. That's SSL stapling. And those are the important ones. SSL session tickets, I'm not too sure about. I could Google that and find out, though, if I wanted to. All right, we're going to save that file, that sslparams.conf. And at this point, I did forget a key step. If we look down here, it says error writing, no such file or directory. Well, I'm going to use, I'm going to background this. I'm going to take a, a, a workaround on this based on the fact it doesn't exist. I realize, oh, I didn't install Apache. I need to do that, right? So I'm going to hit Control Z to background. I'm going to run my apt install Apache 2. Pause the video while it runs through that. Because I tried to edit a file and save it where a folder didn't exist, now that I've installed Apache, should have created that folder. So I'm going to type FG to get back to that backgrounded process. I'm going to hit Control O to save. Now it saves with no problem because Apache is installed and that directory where we're trying to save this file exists. That was actually a good error to come up with because sometimes you try to save things inside of Pico, they don't save. Pretty easy to back out of it with Control Z, fix what you need to fix, and then save the file or do whatever you need to do. So our next move is going to be, we're going to open up um, Etsy Apache 2, sites available, and there is a, a file already there called defaultssl.conf. So we're going to open that up, and we're going to make some changes here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to, what did I say, Beck, I think, at mooo.com. I don't think it needs to match. The email I don't think is absolutely the new Beck.moo.com. And again, I don't remember what I put in the certificate at this point because I've been through a few things, but um, I'm pretty sure the email doesn't have to match. Let's hope so. But this does. This is sent along with the certificate, and uh, this has to match across the board. So this is going to be newbeck.moo.com. Our document root will be just our var www html. We could, um, this is the nice thing about virtual host. See, this is a virtual host file. We could create another one of these. This is called default ssl.conf. I could call this my site-ssl.conf or whatever I wanted. And I could say, okay, if I receive requests for a different domain name, uh, route those requests to this other directory. So you can host multiple domain names on a, on a single machine simply by having it serve from different directories. And down here at the bottom, uh, you'll see this in that tutorial. The easiest thing to do is I'm going to kill these two lines with Control K. And I'm going to grab those two SSL certificate lines from that website we're working with. I'm going to copy them. And I'm just going to right click inside of PuTTY to paste. So that that, that self-signed certificate that we put there, Apache self cert and this private Apache self key are going to be valid locations. That's where we placed it at the very beginning. All right, so we've got our self-signed certificate in place. I'm not entirely certain this is necessary, but I'm going to do a UFW disable on this machine. I'm just going to go ahead and stop that firewall. Now we have to enable modules in Apache, and uh, this is where they'll get you in Cyber Patriot. They'll have modules enabled. Uh, A2 and mod SSL. And it's telling me that... Um, it's going to modify some things that are already modified. If I wanted to disable a model, like a, a module, like an A2 dismod something. And if you're in Cyber Patriot, you can list all the modules that are running with Apache with this command. You want to write this one down? 
Apache 2 CTL hyphen capital M. That's going to show all the mods that are enabled, and you can see there's our SSL module that we've just enabled for SSL. Just an FYI on that, so we did our A2 nmod SSL. Let's do an A2 nmod. Let's enable another module called headers. And let's do an A2 n site uh, default SSL because we just went in and modified that configuration. So we need to enable that site here within Apache. We need to also A2 n conf SSL params, which was that first file we couldn't save at first. We want to make sure that's included. And let's do an Apache 2 CTL config test and it should say syntax okay if it doesn't a mistake was made and we have to figure out where that is and our last move is to go through and do a system ctl restart apache 2 and we should now after you know doing that and going through that set of, of moves we should have apache running on port 443. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to be very specific here. HTTPS colon colon. Go with that. And in this case it was newbeck.mooo.com and you can see we have a potential. This is Firefox by the way. Use Firefox. Uh, Chrome might just kick you out and may not give you the same result. Firefox is going to give you this. Chrome will who knows what happens in Chrome. Um, but essentially, here's what's happening. It's saying, look, you got a you got a security risk here. Here's an SSL certificate, and we can't validate that newbeck.moo.com is who they say they are. They haven't taken any extra steps right now to verify their identity through the public key infrastructure. We just kind of signed our own certificate. And that's because on this computer, we have a, a trusted certificate store and we could actually add our certificate um, to the private store on this computer so that it does trust it. You can add things to your private certificate store. And here I am under privacy and security for Firefox. I could choose view certificates. And you can see here are the authorities that we could uh, possibly trust. And so if you're a certificate authority and you've gone through all the steps necessary to sort of get your certificate built into a browser like Firefox or Internet Explorer, um, that's kind of a big deal. There's a lot of steps involved there. We can see here's one I didn't trust, and this is the one that we'll be using to sort of validate our certificate in the next steps. This is the one that, this is Let's Encrypt, is the I didn't trust uh, root CA. And you can see that it's built into Firefox here. So we haven't, uh, we haven't associated with any of these root CAs right now. That's why we're seeing this, but we can go ahead and choose uh, advanced and we can accept the risk. We can say, okay, I understand that this has not been validated by a CA, but I want to go ahead and establish an encrypted session anyway. That's what this is saying. Again, self-signed cert right there. When we get in here, we have HTTPS and we've got our Apache Ubuntu default page. Key thing here is we're going to change in the next video. You can see we have the lock here with the yellow sort of um, exclamation mark. Uh, that's not green right now. That's what we would expect to see is green. That means everything checks out. PKI is working for us. Right now we have a lock, which means we're encrypted. But uh, we have the yellow exclamation mark, which means the identity has not been verified. But we're going to go ahead and take those steps in the next video.